Any chaps watching, um, what do they need to look out for to identify testicular cancer, Bob? Well, basically, um, and I was one that never did anything like that, um, you should check your balls, let's be honest. And if there's any difference, go and see a doctor. I know it's hard now to see a doctor, to be honest. Um, you've got to ring them up nowadays, and um, you're very lucky to see one because of the pandemic. Um, but always check your body. And it's the same thing with ladies as well. Check your breasts and everything. Um, if You know there's a bit of a change. And I was stupid. I'll be honest, I did nothing about it. I thought it was a result of a kick in a race one day and did nothing about it. Nearly left it too late. Um, you know, I got to stage four out of stage five. Um, if I'd left it another month, I wouldn't have been here. So I was very, very lucky. And, you know, basically, I still did nothing, but I was in America and... Um, I've ridden a winner at Delaware, and I started going out with a vet, a lady vet, mind you, and having ridden the winner, <laughs> managed to get her into bed that night. And the first thing she said to me was, if I was you, I'd get on the first plane back to England and see a specialist. Well, I promise you, that put me off my stroke. <laughs> it really did. And I got on the plane and went um, to see a doctor um, Dr. Alan Thomas at the Park Street Clinic those days, who used to patch all us jockeys up um, with, through our injuries, and he sent me straight to the Marsden, and that saved my life, to be honest. What were your emotions when you got that diagnosis, Bob? Did you think it was game over? Yes, I did. I was petrified, I must admit, and um, absolutely devastated, and I thought, how long have I got left? And... The treatment those days was barbaric. I promise you, uh, vinblastin, bleomycin, platinum, and other things pumped into you for six or seven days, two or three days off, then they'd hit you again. And you were virtually dead after the treatment. You were sick 24 hours a day. And when you got home, they used to say, don't go near anybody who's got a cough or cold, you'll catch septicemia. Well, I got septicemia twice and nearly died. They changed my blood and came round again. I was very fortunate. I must admit, if they hadn't got me back to the hospital, I wouldn't have been here. But the hard thing when I finished the treatment was the getting fit, because I came out with I'd lost about 60% of lung capacity. Um, I still haven't got it back. I've got about 95% back now. And that was the hardest thing, to breathe properly, especially being a so-called athlete, jockey, um, where you've got to have 100%. So I had to train harder and harder um, to get fit, and it took me longer than I anticipated. But I did go back to America, and the reason I went back to America was I knew the weather would be nice and warm over there. It was winter here in England, very cold winter, and I couldn't breathe in the frosty days. So the sunshine got me back a couple of months quicker than I would have in England. I would have got fit here, but um, the sunshine did help.